I have filmed no shortage of videos searching the bushland in my local area for a wide assortment of fascinating mini beasts. But now it's time for a much bigger adventure. A while ago I learned that Mini Beast Wildlife, Australia's largest and most reputable online bug store, was to be hosting a conference up in Karanda, situated in far north Queensland. For me, this was an opportunity too good to miss. It was a roughly one day train trip from Brisbane, and much of that time was spent peering out the window and watching the familiar suburbs fade away into countryside, then vast expanses of sugarcane field backed by mountains covered in lush rainforest growth. The picturesque scenery almost compensated for the fact that I was sitting a couple rows in front of a fellow whose snoring could only be described as sounding like Darth Vader violating a herd of buffalo. But thankfully I would not have to put up with it forever. As the foliage grew ever more luxuriant, it became apparent that we were nearing our destination. I arrived at Karanda in the mid-afternoon, so there were a few hours to kill before nightfall, which is when most of the wildlife tends to come out. Not wanting to waste that time, I decided to take a little walk around the area and see what I could find. Among the first finds of the day was this tiger beetle from the genus Dystipsidera. And a couple of rather nondescript katydid nymphs. Katydids, unsurprisingly, are extremely diverse in these tropical rainforests, especially at this time of year, and it didn't take long to encounter another species, and one that is not only more impressive, but a whole lot more familiar to me. Here, pressed up against the bark of this tree, is Fricta spinosa. Quite a large species of katydid and very common in this area, but seldom seen due to its excellent camouflage. Its mottled coloration helps it blend in seamlessly with the lichen-covered trunk, and the spikes protruding from its legs not only afford it some degree of protection, but help to break up the animal's outline as well. This individual is still only a juvenile, as evidenced by its undeveloped wings. Adults with fully functional, albeit seldom used, wings are among the largest and most impressive katydids in the country. This one, already quite a sight to behold, still has a fair way to go. And not a katydid, but a member of the same order, Orthoptera, a juvenile Valanga irregularis, Australia's biggest grasshopper species. So katydids and their kin were certainly out in full force, flaunting their sheer diversity for all of us to see. And nor were they the only arthropod group to do so. Perhaps unsurprisingly, there was a wide variety of spiders as well, like this not-so-happy couple of Aegyapi etheria. I say not so happy because the male is probably doing the deed without her consent, and could be eaten by his mate at any moment. So don't any of you guys complain about being in a volatile relationship. And nor is getting devoured by your spouse the only thing these spiders need to worry about. There's another spider in these forests that specialises in preying on them. Meet Portia Fimbriata. He's a species of jumping spider, a member of a family properly known as the Salticidae, which contains more species than any other spider family. However, Portia is unique among jumping spiders. Firstly, they occasionally spin webs, which is what this individual was found in. Not an especially fancy web, I'll grant, but who needs that when you are quite possibly the most intelligent spider on the planet? These jumping spiders specialise in hunting other spiders, mainly orb weavers such as the aforementioned Argiope. They can spend several hours observing the spider's web from different angles, formulating a plan of attack. For such a small animal, these behaviours are mind-bogglingly complex, 
and quite frankly, if you're a spider and this guy lays eyes on you, well, you'd better start writing your will. Portia tend to move in a bizarre, robotic, and overall a very unspider-like manner, likely for the purpose of masking their movements and making it seem less obvious that they are in fact a living animal. This allows it to avoid being detected by both predators and prey alike. I, however, am not a spider, and Portia proved to be exceptionally friendly, if a little too keen to show off his jumping skills. But then again, they are called jumping spiders for a reason. Other spiders encountered early on in the trip included Gasteracantha fornicata, the first species of spider to be named and classified in Australia, and a juvenile Nephilopilipes. Not much to look at at the moment, but a fully grown female of this species is Australia's largest orb weaver. And mark my words, a true sight to behold. There was also a very familiar face in the form of Holcornia imanis, a species of huntsman with which I am very well acquainted. But that's about it with the daytime shenanigans. Now let's get into the night walks. As the sun sank lower and the sky grew darker, the oncoming night was heralded by a deafening chorus. Frogs of all kinds were out and about, and boy were they making their presence known. As it continued to get darker, many of these endearing loudmouths began to show themselves on the thankfully now deserted roads. This is Ranoidia cerulea. And this, Nyctomystes infrafrenatus. Before I continue on with the rest of the video, it is worth saying that some of the animals I'm encountering on this trip are ones that are of very little familiarity to me. And as such, there's only so much I could say about them on the spot. So yeah, don't expect top quality narration on everything here. Alright, starting off the night, and not quite where I was expecting to find one, we got a young Ethmostigmus rubripes. Or at least I'm pretty confident that that's what it is. Can't really see much of the body, of course. But either way, it is a centipede, and no matter how small or how hard to ID it might be, I'm kind of obliged to film as many of them as I can find. Alright, let's keep cracking. And here on this tree is one of the animal kingdom's most excellent examples of camouflage. This is Pandacetes gracilis. It's a species of huntsman, quite a small one too. This is actually an adult female. And oh, I can't really put my hand next to her because both my hands are full. But it's only a few centimeters across. And I know she's an adult because she is actually guarding an egg sac. And that egg sac is almost as well camouflaged as she is absolutely remarkable spiders and this one was found about maybe two minutes into the walk so I got some pretty high hopes and literally the next big tree we have well a snake yeah no shit but not one that I can confidently identify so anyone on here who's more well versed with our Aussie snakes feel free to chime in And take a look here. This is possibly the largest raspy cricket I've ever... Okay, stand still for the camera please, champ. This is a member of the family Gryllacridae, commonly known as the raspy crickets. But that's a bit of a misnomer since they're not actually crickets. This might, and big emphasis on might here, be a member of the genus Cholio Gryllacris. And they are very generalised feeders. They'll go for a, a whole variety of fruits, but they're also pretty effective predators and will attack a wide variety of smaller animals too. 
one that's as big as this, well, there's quite a lot that could potentially be on its menu, and oh, there we go. Yeah, I know, my videos are very professionally filmed. If you see the front there, those four limbs have powerful grappling spines, and they'll use those to restrain their prey when they pounce on it. And those mandibles, they're huge, they're incredibly powerful, and they'll make short work of pretty much anything that this insect pounces on. And here we have another Pandacetes chrysalis. This one is rather more orange in coloration compared to the previous example. And this species is in fact quite variable in both its coloration and patterning. So pretty much no two spiders you find are going to look exactly the same. I honestly can't believe I was able to spot them. These are baby Pandacetes gracilis. Judging by their size and the fact that I've found three, three, where's, where's the other two? There you are, in very close proximity to one another. I'm suspecting that maybe they've recently dispersed from a sack, in which case their mother should be quite close. And oh look, there's another one. Yeah, there really are a lot of you here. Mummy, where are you? Realise how suspicious that sounds, yelling out, Mummy, where are you, in the middle of the bush. But no, I'm talking about a spider, because that totally makes it sound less weird. And here, a very familiar sight from back in Brisbane. This is a heteropoda, possibly slash probably heteropoda jugulans. And it's got itself quite the mid eighth. It's got itself quite... I give up. Hanging around here on this pandanus leaf is a fully grown Trolliogrelacris. Now the reason I can tell this is an adult is it has completely developed wings, unlike the wing buds that we saw on that juvenile earlier. And this is also a female, I can tell that, because of the ovipositor projecting out because of the ovipositor projecting out at the rear end, and if my camera could focus that'd be great. Uh, yeah, that's that's the best you're gonna get, guys. Rather interesting Katie did here, and, uh, excuse me, sir. As I was saying, rather interesting Katie did here. This is from the genus Ostra Salamona. I actually have one of these at home as well. Like the raspberry crickets I covered before, these are very generalized, although they probably aren't as predatory as the raspberry crickets. But either way, if they do want to snapple down an insect, well, those mandibles will do that job and then some more. Got another Pandacetes gracilis. Again, it's an adult female guarding her egg sac. The only reason this one was able to be easily noticed is because she's holding her legs a bit above the ground, which kind of throws a spanner in the works for her disguise. But props for trying. And then there's whatever this guy is. Not a huntsman, and yeah, not, not, not entirely sure off the top of my head, actually. Little millipede here. Very similar to the ones I get down in Brisbane. Not quite the same, but similar. Thing with millipedes, though, is there's a lot of undescribed species out there. So attempting to identify one, especially just based off looks, is pretty difficult. I know this might look like a UFO because of the, the light reflecting on it, but this is actually a spider. Gastrocantha quadrispinosa, the name means four spines, which refers to, well, four prominent spines on this spider's abdomen. And they, combined with the generally odd shape, provide a form of defense. If an animal tries to swallow that, well, it's not gonna be the most pleasant or comfortable mouthful. And it also helps that it kind of looks like the eye of Sauron, too. It's a spider each spider world out there. Well, now I really feel like I'm back at home in Brisbane. Here is Entelagama lesiurii, the eastern water dragon. And back in Brisbane, these fellows are everywhere around the city. 
Out in the wild, they're likely to be more alert, not quite as used to human contact. So the fact that this one was resting is probably the only reason I was able to get so close to it for so long. So that's that for this video, and bear in mind that this was only from the first day of the trip. So there's a lot more content coming, I can assure you. If you enjoyed, then feel free to subscribe and check out some of my other uploads. There'll be plenty more Karanda content coming soon, plus some of my usual stuff. Thank you very much for watching, that is it from me, and I shall see you again very soon.